Yo, Elliot, I'm dealing with imposter syndrome bad and wonder what your thoughts were on how to overcome that. At only 24, I've got an online business. I'm ranked top 10 in the world in my craft, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. People love to be around me and I've got mostly positive habits for myself and I really feel like I'm becoming a king. I've always wanted to share and express myself more of who I am. However, self-doubt and lack of confidence is keeping me stuck at times. I want to start creating YouTube videos and content about how I got here, plus overcoming, overcoming drug addiction and other demons in my life. Yet some parts of me feel uncomfortable with that. I know how valuable I am, yet I feel like I'm always seeking validation and trying to prove myself that I'm good. I feel like it's programming from my childhood that must be undone. Not sure if this is making sense, but I'm hoping that you had some advice for how I could overcome imposter syndrome and just be the awesome man that God has meant me to be. So, first I want to acknowledge you, right? Like, I want to say congratulations. You're doing a great job. You're 24 and you have your online business and you're, rack, you're ranked top 10 in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. People like being around you. You have positive habits and you feel like you're becoming a king. So really, everything's working out for you. It really is, especially at only 24 right now. As you know, you're at the beginning of a whole new phase for yourself in your life and you're starting off on the right foot. Most men at 24 are not starting off where you're starting off. They're starting off confused. They don't have their business. They don't know what business. They don't know what job. They don't know where they're going. They don't practice their craft. They're not top 10 in the world. They're not having great. You're you're in the top 10 in the world in your craft, but you're in the top 10% of 24 year olds that I've come across. I just got to put that out there to you. Now, you use this word imposter syndrome. I hear people saying this a lot. Imposter syndrome, meaning that you feel like you're an imposter. Maybe you don't deserve what you have. Maybe that's what it is. Um, and I think that's what most people, most people that have imposter syndrome, they have this sense that I don't deserve what I have. I'm an imposter. I'm faking it or that I'm something other than what people believe I am. If you were here with me earlier today, you may have heard me give a rant about overthinking ourselves, being too self-absorbed. And this is a problem that we have in our culture. When things are so easy, we turn all of our attention to ourselves and then we make up all these stories to make ourselves sick. We make up problems. You're making up a problem. You actually don't have a problem. You're doing really well. And sometimes when we're doing real well, there's a sense of boredom that accompanies it, right? And with that boredom, we want to create problems. And you know what? You know what? The one, the number one uh, industry that creates fucking problems is psychoanalysis. This whole thing you call imposter syndrome sounds like psycho babble, psycho uh, uh, psycho uh, analysis babble. Oh, you have because everybody wants a fucking diagnosis. Let's diagnose you now. You're not feeling 100% about something. You're a little, like everybody else. Nobody, let me tell you something. Nobody is fully confident in themselves. I'm not fully confident in myself. I got a big mouth and I speak with enthusiasm, but there are times I look at myself and I'm like, damn, I don't, I'm not really sure, right? And I just kind of own it. No, but instead of that just being a normal course in life, instead of it just being normal that sometimes we're, we have self-doubt. Sometimes we lack confidence. Just as, a, as opposed to that just being something that is a, you know, a, a lack of maturity, something that as you grow, you'll, you'll overcome because you will. You will. You'll overcome it. You'll overcome it. Instead of it just being that, instead of it just being a lack of experience, we now have to diagnose it. Right. Self-doubt is no more, just, no, no less normal than stubbing your toe. But because you can't point to it and say, look, my toe is stubbed. You got to point to it and say, that's my diagnosis. I got this. In, I have this syndrome. Everybody wants a fucking syndrome. You know what a part of part of the problem also, too, is that in our in our culture, we make people with problems heroes. Have you noticed this? 
Look at what happened in the Olympics this year. This year, the, America is a shame. America is disgusting. It's the most shameful display of Americanism ever before shown up on the, on the world stage through this Olympics. Simone Biles is a degenerate. What a sick, sad millennial. This child who had the opportunity to be all she could be and fulfill her role as a, as a hero to young ladies... She got some problems. She got some mental problems. I don't know. She's stressed out. Whatever it is, right? She got imposter syndrome. Something fake. Something fake. Because when it's in your head, it's fake. But she got some kind of emotional problem. And you know what we do with people that have problems? You know what we, know we should do with people that have problems? Help them. Help them. But you know what we do in our culture instead? We turn them into fucking heroes. Put them on a pedestal. Look, she's got a problem. She's so brave. This is what makes me sick. And it, it, can, it can confuse us. And I just don't want this to confuse you. I don't want to confuse anybody else. This idea that because I have a syndrome, that, that I get a sense of self-worth from it. Because we do, right? I have ADD. I have depression. I have hyper-anxiety syndrome. I have, and, and people, they love their syndromes. They love their diseases and they self-identify with it because what? Because in this culture, we turn you into heroes. It doesn't make us a hero. It doesn't make you a hero. It makes you a hero when you overcome. You say you want to start making YouTube videos and content about how I got here plus overcoming drug addiction and demons in your life, but some part of me feels uncomfortable with that. You know what that part of you that feels uncomfortable with that is? Lazy. Right? It's a lazy, scared part of yourself, right? They're both kind of on the same spectrum. You're lazy and you're a little afraid. Guess what? Me too. I get lazy and I get afraid. But I don't have to diagnose it. I need to overcome it. You overcome that, you say, uncomfortable part. Yeah, it's fucking uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to get in front of a camera and know that thousands, maybe millions of people are going to see you and judge you. It's uncomfortable to talk about your drug addiction and the demons in your life that you have to overcome and being vulnerable in front of people who are going to judge you that don't know you. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but you get comfortable being uncomfortable by what? Doing the damn thing. You do the thing to have the power. You get uncomfortable so that you become comfortable being uncomfortable and the fucking whole um, discomfort goes away. Right? The discomfort will go away. You say, I know how valuable I am, Right? Yet, I'm always seeking validation and to prove myself that I'm good. But that's not a problem. You're noticing that about yourself, right? First of all, it's good. You value yourself, right? That's a great thing. It's nice. You're a great guy. You're doing great things. But then you go on to complain about normal shit. Always seeking validation. Everybody's seeking validation. And the younger you are, the more validation you're going to seek. Do you remember being 14, how much more validation you were seeking than when you're 24? And when you're 34, you're going to seek less validation. And then when you're 44, you just stop giving a fuck. It's a normal part of life. Everybody's seeking validation. Anybody who makes YouTube videos, has an Instagram account, TikToks, they're seeking validations and they're proving themselves. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's about how you're attached to it. Are you so seeking a validation that you do nothing because you don't want rejection? Now, that's a problem. That means you'd be, you'd be back to square one, lazy and afraid. You know your value. You're seeking validation because you want other people to see your value. And that's normal. That's natural. That's okay. That shouldn't hold you back. You say, I'm trying to prove that myself that I'm good. Well, that's, you know yourself to be good because you know your value. You have an online business. You're top 10 in the world. People like being around you. You have positive habits you're doing great wanting other people to see that you're great doesn't mean you have imposter syndrome doesn't mean that you have a problem that you need to overcome it means that you're on and you say programming from childhood that must be undone all of us got the same fucking childhood programming man every single one of us that grew up in the american school system got that same problem we all got that problem but it's really not a problem it's just it's just a it's just a stumbling block to get over it's just a bump in the road so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you don't have a problem. You have no problems. <laughs> you making up problems. Maybe you just want to hear Elliot rant about something. But the bottom line is you're doing great. 
You're on the right path. You have a little bit of doubt. That's okay. You get over the doubt, right? You don't become top 10 in the world at jujitsu if you don't know how to overcome, right? You clearly know how to overcome. You don't start an online business that seems somewhat successful, right, at 24 and not know how to overcome self-doubt, lack of confidence. You know what to do. You have the tools to get over it. Don't make up any problems. Stop making problems for yourself. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. Stop making problems for yourself. You're doing great. Just keep going. Keep going. And I'll, I'll give you this last piece. It's not. This is not... Popular advice is not even my favorite advice to give. I hate giving this advice, but I have to say it because I can see it. You're 24. You're young. That doesn't invalidate your situation that you're young, but it means you got a long road ahead of yourself. Between 24 and 36, the next 12 years, right now, first of all, you are setting yourself up for 12 years of tremendous success. Any of the problems that you think you have right now at 24, by 36, you're going to look back and you'll laugh at yourself. If this video makes it to YouTube, I want you to watch it five years from now, 10 years from now. I want you to watch it. I want you to realize, man, yeah, what the hell was I whining about? Right? You realize you're doing all right. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.